Hi, <laughs> welcome to the Margie and Lisa show. I'm Margie Wigan. I'm Lisa Jackson. And we're glad you could join us. We have the very lucky circumstance of having Peter Lagoy join us to talk about the Hopkinton trails for our first segment. And our question is, do we have enough trails? Should we have more trails? And what's happening with the trails that we have now? Pick any of those to start with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Whatever yeah. you want to talk about. Um, so do we have enough trails? No, we still need some connection. Good. Um, do we have some trails? Yes, and, and we're getting more, and so that's a good thing. Yes. Um, and we have different types of trails, which is something that's relatively new, um, mm -hmm. probably in the last 10 years or so. Cool. Um, so how, do you know about how many trails we have now? Number wise, not to put you on the spot. Not but number wise, do you have a, I like don't. A general, I probably would, twenty miles. Yeah, 20 I miles would. Of trails. I would gather that too because it hasn't changed a whole lot since we did the Hopping Dunn Trails Guide. Right. Um, I want to say twelve or thirteen years ago because mm -hmm. I remember doing it on my horse. Yeah. <laughs> so, and yeah. is that still available at Town Hall? Yeah, it's, it's print. Okay. Do you, yeah. It's on. Print? It's on, actually on the website. Oh, good. Oh, cool. Good. Yeah. Good. yeah. So. Hopkinton Trails Guide on the on the town website, Hopkinton right. And there's off. so many amazing trails. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. of course, being an equestrian, I ride on a lot of the trails, but the hiking, I mean, we're so lucky to have really Hopkinton State Park, even though part of it's in Ashland. We, uh, we abut Ashland State Park. We have Cameron Woods, we have Barry Acres, we have the new trail Echo around Trail. Lake Whitehall. Yeah, the trail around Lake Whitehall. I yep. mean, there's, I mean, there's, and that connectivity is a big piece that we looked at. And if I remember correctly, the connectivity was really difficult through 495. Mm -hmm. That was of where, because I, I, I fiddled around in the woods on my horse a lot to see if I could find a passageway through to that because it'd be nice to go over onto the Massmanac side and on the Whitehall side and that was so how did you get much how did you get the horse all the way down to Lake Maspinock um you trails on the, oh okay yeah so not Maspinock I haven't ridden to Maspinock I was trying to find because oh I can't remember his name told me there was an old underpass an old brick underpass under 495 right the the Snowmobilers know about yes. and, and dirt bikers. Yeah, so I, I haven't was, found it either. Yeah, okay, yeah. so I've looked for it for my on my horse because it's over by where 135 and um, and 495 cross. Mm. So then you could dip right into Cameron Wood on Whisper wow. Way and then hop into Cameron Woods and yep. and That's all amazing. around there. So I was I was looking for it on my horse, but I and in in, in the winter when there wasn't a lot of right. foliage out, but it was. I never found it, so maybe I got to hit up some of my snowmobiler and, you know, yeah. I, have my to, friends. I want to interject just for a second. Yeah. Many of those trails were made by Hopkinton Eagle Scouts. Yes. So yes. they 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 broke the trails. They cleared out some of the trees. I you know was so proud of them. I know the Echo Lake Trail is a new one and and Barry the Acres Hall, they did. Barry Acres White was Hall a was, Eagle uh, Scout project yeah. with yep. the Trails Club. Right, right. exactly. So the trail around Lake Whitehall was yep. an Eagle Scout project. Dion, yeah. And yeah, you're right. We just did um, Echo Trail. We yep. had the opening yep. last Cam Monday. Cameron Hanna. And Hannah. yeah, Cameron Hanna was put the bridge in there. Yeah. Yeah, so, it is awesome. Sorry, so I just no. wanted to put yeah. the plug in for the Eagle Scouts. No, and that's huge because yeah. they do so much work on the yeah. trails. I mean, yeah. they the Eagle Scout project that we did many years ago on Barry Acres, the kid made wonderful wood placards right. that were in hand-drawn, you know, like trail maps of Barry Acres and cleared the trail and yeah. did bridges. I mean, they, they are such an amazing partner, yeah. and it's a great project for and kids. The, and it, I also think that having the kids do that helps them invest in the community as well absolutely you know so they have yeah. pride in pride of place right. literally that they worked so hard and they they put their heart and soul and leadership and skills and you know so the kids have feel ownership of the trails as absolutely. well. absolutely yeah. and it, yeah. it's such a community asset i mean it really 
the connectivity piece is huge, you know, mm -hmm. and people don't realize that, you know, there's actually safety when people use trails, you know. Right. Well, we, we had our um, Trails Club forum not in the spring, and that mm -hmm. was actually one of the things we talked about is, is safety and the fact that, you know, so many people these days, if I run on the roads a lot, yeah. and you we know, every you. third driver is not looking like, at the road, <laughs> they're looking at their lap, and you're, yeah. you're kind of like, no, that's yes, yeah, you know, it's while you're ready to while jump off the drinking road, your you're, coffee, and you're it, sort or of or texting or whatever. They're exactly, distracting themselves with. Exactly, it's just distracted. And, right. and do we really want our kids? No, you know, <laughs> we don't. We real we on the other hand, we do want our kids to have a place where they can go yeah. and get away from that and, right. and not have to worry about that. That kids can sit down in the middle of the trail and. You know, they can ride their bike and you're not yeah, worried about them weaving out into yep. the road. And, or yeah. they can do the cross country, like we were saying. Exactly. You know? so they, they use this The high trail. school can use it, middle school can use it. Um, and we, then we had that beautiful arts on the trail yes. project. Do you think we're going to be able to do that again? or We hope so. Because when I talked to them when I was out there last week, they said they were thinking about it again, but more temporary, not have it up for the six weeks, mm -hmm. but yeah. more temporary. Because we just due had to a, the a call, I, uh, someone emailed about that. Uh, whether we would do the art. I know there was the vandalism. I'm hoping that, you know, those individuals have been either spoken to or, um, yeah, yeah hopefully. figured out who they were and or, say, yeah. what are you thinking? Yeah. You know, it's not yeah. cool. Yeah. So. No, it was amazing, the art on the trail. I it love really that. was. Yeah. It was yeah. And I, I didn't know about the poetry on the trail, mm -hmm. and then she was telling me about the poetry. That trail is very, it's grown. The You've done trail? such an amazing job on the yeah, center, center trail, trail growing that from where I started and I was, it was funny I was explaining to my mom what it looked like and people were so worried about the safety of people using that trail but ironically people kids were back there partying all the time so before before, before the trail, trail. Oh, so yeah, yeah so that, yeah so oh, like that all went away didn't realize and, that. Yeah, yeah so that you know like kids would have fires there were four wheelers nothing oh, wrong with okay. multi use trails but you know like it was it was pretty Risky. and Isn't actually nice. that whole section that initial section alongside of commonwealth mm -hmm. um across from the respite center that was all trash and cars mm -hmm. and tires mm -hmm. and like it, it, when yeah. i looked at it i'm like oh are we going to be able to up. do it for the money but it was right. you know it was really in, yeah in no pretty... that was great that you cleaned all that stuff out oh, so that was... i can go put the yeah. other yeah, exactly <laughs> no you went in and made it like so so much more usable and so yeah, the surface is so nice now too. It's mm -hmm. really, you know, really multi-purpose. Really, the is only it that thing. fine pebble? What did it's they a, put it's in? It's a stone dust. Stone yeah. dust. So there's yeah. basically a base layer that right. is anywhere from on that trail. It's as deep as three feet. There's yeah. Three yeah. Feet of material it would have had parts. to be. So it's because, like putting yeah. down yeah. a driveway, Road but base, they just don't put base. the asphalt. And then yeah. instead of asphalt, you put stone, stone dust, dust, which is the upper couple mm -hmm. inches. Is that stone dust? So I know that um, I know that one of the concerns about the trails. And that one, for, for a good example, would be that the neighbors right there feel like extra parking, extra traffic, you know, and then someone on the trail being able to have access to their home. Do, are you fighting that with a lot of the trails, or are there trails upcoming that you're, you're We're having We're certainly that? fighting that, um, yeah. lo looking at the Hughes Trail, and I've had that same, very same issue twice now on, mm -hmm. on two ends of it. Yep. Um, I think people don't like change. Right. You and know, none of us do. And is that and, the and granite, that by Granite Street, the Hughes Trail? Where's that one? Hughes Lumber? Trail is, is off of 192 mm -hmm. Hayden Row Street. Oh, okay. Rose from there. And the trail itself will go from there and then have a turnaround close to Charles View, close to Joseph Road. Okay. But it won't actually connect out. It's the piece stone that dust. was Betty Wyckoff's land. No, no, Betty Wyckoff was Echo. Okay. That's already done. Okay, so that yeah, was Echo. that okay. one's done. This is Charlotte. the piece... Hughes, oh, that was in, the between. Hughes property in between. Oh, okay. Yeah. So from Granite back. Right. It's um, a, Granite it, North. It goes east west. Oh, east west. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. And that's that's part. That's where the dog park question is as right. well. Right. The dog park was going to go in head. there, but yeah. You know, they're they're looking at other locations, but I mean, we bought that land as a town for active and passive recreation. Right. Whether the dog park right goes in or not it's we still want to, we want right. to put the trail in. exactly Absolutely. and i think that's what the grant was for active and passive recreation 
So yeah. there is money set aside to improve that area for that purpose mm -hmm. already. Yeah. So we have, um, Meg says, can't wait for the bike trail to be extended in Hopkinton. Wouldn't it be great if kids could walk and cycle to school? Right. right. And there's so. actually a lot of... Thanks, Meg. Thanks, Meg. Yeah, a lot of federal funding, actually, that is tied to connectivity to major routes in mm -hmm. schools. Yes, yes. So that... Yeah. Well, and again, with, I think... The green with developments are. that are going in, mm -hmm. the town looks to get trails as part of that. So the yeah. recently the Chamberlain Whalen was going to have some allow some trail connectivity. They actually, I think, I'm not sure how it finally ended up, but yep. one of the considerations was that instead of having sidewalks going to Chamberlain, which is a road that doesn't have sidewalks on it, right, it doesn't. Their yeah. connection was going to be a trail from the cul-de-sac where the new houses are going to go mm -hmm. over okay. to the school <clears throat> off of both that and then the Wayland Inn, which oh, sure. and makes a lot of sense because there, Chamberlain ends. that then allows yeah. people to get there and then to get to downtown. Right. Yes, and right. they don't, so the road, the cars can't go through there, right? There's a gate or something? There'd be, a, there'd be some, so right, there, mm -hmm. the cars can't continue through, but there's okay. ways to allow kids or people. Right, so if you had a trail that could provide that connection and the continuation, that would benefit Every day. bikers, walkers, right? Mm -hmm. But then you're still preserving that neighborhood feel that right. the I know Chamberlain and Whalen both um, right. argue kind for. Of, our right. kids can ride their bike in the street. Right. Where you know it's not gonna it's gonna change the quality of life. Right. So are those neighbors concerned about a trail going through? Not, as, not all, that I know not of. Not on a, Chamberlain. I, They've yeah. been supportive even when I right. I worked on Chamberlain um, because that's where the center trail ends. Yes. And and they were all everybody was very supportive. And right. it's a dead yeah. end street, and it's a actually a really nice place, yeah. you know, like for it to kind of end if you if you will. But it, I think it you know people don't understand that by people using the trails. I think it makes the property safer. Mm -hmm. And particularly if it's town-owned yeah. property, I know, I'm not sure if it's still true, but the town bike officer goes down, would go oh. down the center trail. And that was one of the issues that came up, and um, Chief Irving at the time, Tom mm -hmm. Irving, had said, yeah, we can add that to our route when the bike hmm. officer was doing it. And I'm not sure if they're still doing it. I, I haven't seen one but around, it, but But it's so it well utilized, yeah. utilized now that it's it's really, yeah. it's you know, it, it makes your property safer, and it sure. really, it makes can... it look better. I mean, I think, you know, but that's my opinion. I obviously well, it's, love it's, it's actually an amenity. You know, it so is. if you have a trail that you can access from your home, right? Um, then it's a, it's a, I think it's an addition. Well, to Well, I have a friend that's a real estate agent. That's mm -hmm. something she puts in the description right, exactly. of a house that she's selling. If it's yeah. if it's on a trail, and it definitely increases the values. And there's some. Um, if you have conservation restrictions, if you do donate your land for a trail, you can get a, a reduction in your homeowner's insurance, mm -hmm. your taxes. So there's a lot of benefits even for, ta even if we don't own the trails and people allow us to cross them. That's another thing we looked at early on is, is ways that people could provide an easement or, mm -hmm. or a passageway to connect the trails. So we, we actually have an email question, who takes care of the trails? Oh. So it sounds like the police monitor what's Mike, happening. Right. Mike well, does. who's taking care of the well, trails? Well, yeah, on Center Trail, it's Mike Bolson. But yeah. actually, the um, Hopkinton Area Land Trust okay. yes. um, covers some of that land, and they have assigned stewards okay. to each section. So and there's a bunch Steve Frobeter, me. for example, has the section that what I call phase two of Center Trail. Yeah. The piece that goes to Chamberlain Street. And then yeah. Mike okay. Bolson takes care of mm -hmm. phase one, the, right. the normal Center and Trail. And I know Jeff Ferber is very active and Jeff um, Ferber does. And, um, um, yeah. yeah. And even the trails. You know, and the other thing is the DPW. I mean, mm -hmm. oh, I, you know, I had on Echo Trail before we finished that, we had a pretty large tree come down across it and mm. the first I heard about it I, I actually drove by and said oh that look look at that I but I didn't think it had hit the trail and I got a email from Mike Manser at DPW and said hey I'll have my guys get that's rid of that for that's you so and I was nice. like, oh that's so because so nice. it's town land you know yeah. we're, we're as part of that echo trail we're going to put a trash can down there perfect and again, I just had an email exchange with him about, you know, how do we do that? How do yes. we best do that? And he yes. said, look, we, we pick up 77 trash cans across Hopkinton. Add one more. Anyway, one more isn't 
Yeah, a that's wonderful. So, so the the town you know, yeah, supports so it. Yeah, Shout out to so. the DPW. Yes, guys. they're awesome. We've yes, had them on definitely. our show too yeah. <laughs> in the yeah. winter. Yeah, but yeah. it's you know it, it's interesting. So the set the Upper Charles River Trail loop it's 26 miles, correct? That's the plan. Yeah, and oh, cool. and and they're the biggest pieces in Milford. Holliston just opened that piece. They finished which, theirs. Yeah. yeah, which I saw. Ashland is still. There's, they're bu bumping around a little bit. I ride on that trail, ride horses mm -hmm. to get to Hopkins and actually... Ashland State Park all the time behind mm -hmm. um, the marathon where mm -hmm. it used to be. So yeah. you can ride back there. They, that's not where they're looking at putting it, I don't think. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Robert Widenick, who's Holliston's oh, chairman. Oh, sure. I've talked and, to Robert before. Yeah, yeah. And also Beals and Thomas. That's who, mm -hmm. um, for all the Engineered work that we've it. done on the Center Trail, Echo Trail, cross country courses. Um, Robert and Beals and Thomas have done the engineering work on that. Yep. But he and I actually met with a couple of Ashland selectmen. I think to talk they to did the re that. most recent feasibility study, or was it MAPC? Um, the feasibility study we did way back in 1997. There was a trails feasibility study yeah. that put it in our town plan. Or yeah, I don't yeah. think that was Beals and Thomas. Yeah, but, so, but they've been heavily. So the, center, the, the rail trail. Mm -hmm. Comes, uh, it, I know it crosses 85 yep. and continues into Milford. Right. So that's the part we can all see. And then we have the parking lot along Route 85. That's, yep, toward Milford. Toward the Milford line. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And then where does it go from there into Hopkinton? It, it, well, there's a gap. There's a gap. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. So that's what I'm trying to figure out. How would you, where would you well, go? Upper, upper Charles Trail Committee is looking at that stuff. And that's a, a group that's a, a town committee that's focused on connecting Milford to Ashland mm -hmm. and okay. looking at paths of, and ways to do that. It's very tricky um, in town too. Yeah. Because it's like um, there's actually the piece that goes through yeah. Hopkinton. Right, they're talking about having to go the, the main yeah, street Yeah, because it's like ABC, you know, those, right. those streets yeah. behind mm -hmm. Bills. Yeah. That's where the old rail trail was. was. Scene, yeah. yeah. But so, I mean, there's you know there's ways. So they're they're looking at that, and they've done multiple feasibility studies mm -hmm. and and lots of studies of that stuff. Okay. Um, I you know we'll see what so it, so where it's going to so out. it's going to come up toward the center of town theoretically from the Milford parking lot area. Yeah, and then and then I'm, be part of the Main Street corridor, and then um, somehow. Hook into yeah, as I Ashland. understand it, I'm not on that committee. So. Yeah, and no, I'm just trying to yeah. visualize where it would even go. Well, it would. I mean, I've looked at it quite a bit. So the new sidewalk that they put in yeah. on 135, right? Really, the rail trail was behind Jay Moran's. So yep. there is the rail trail is behind there, and it's right. still. Although now there's a house built, <laughs> like a big condo complex built on part of it and stuff like that. But that was something we had actually talked to Boulder Capital and now Baystone about on how to reroute that trail system. But I right. think their answer, you know, what they did is they put the, the pavement, you know, did the, the sidewalk on the side of 135, which is great. But it's... it's By Gracious Retirement Living? That yes. Part? Okay. Yeah, and the, it goes all the way up, and then there's a gap in between, between in front of Roger Mezitz. Right. And then it picks up again, like on where the houses start, right. after you cross the um, N Star gas line. Yep. Okay. And mm -hmm. then the, then it, then the the sidewalk continues into yeah. the town. So when so that <clears throat> if that ends up connecting it, it's a 26 mile lengths yep. yeah that would be amazing well and i mean with the marathon museum coming in that saying. would be like <laughs> right i mean that would be such a huge perk yeah. particularly mm -hmm. people that are interested in the marathon wouldn't it be neat to have yeah. actually the upper charles river trail be completed and right and tie all that in together yeah i mean it and mark a halfway point in case they want to start at one end to go yeah to the half and then back yeah. would do their 20. and the milford piece is very it's mass highway standards cool and it's um paved mm -hmm. <laughs> so very yeah. different and then oh, hopkinton right and i remember yeah. that right. discussion about yeah. the field the, this the surface the road surface right. mm -hmm. and i think the stone dust is much better well for the runners. stone dust and it's also easier to maintain but it right. the right. only things that really can't use it are really road bikes and skates. I mean, you can right. ride a mountain bike, a regular bike. You can push your stroller right. down that surface quite easily. That's easy. what Holliston is. So Holliston yeah. has six point seven miles of stone dust. Right. And that was their choice, partially because to get the money to do pavement is a lot more expensive. Right. Mass Maintenance highway standards, if I remember too. correctly, was one point one 
million dollars per mile. It's more than that now. I'm sure. Yeah. That's, I mean, this so, was 14 years ago. Yeah. That's right. unbelievable. So you're yeah. spending $2 million a mile for a paved trail. That's yeah. crazy. And the town's contribution is somewhere between 10%. 10 and 20, 10 or 20 percent. Yeah, they, to get that changed. matching grant. Yeah. So we can build a stone dust trail for 150,000 a mile. Wow. So that's a big difference. Town's contribution and, and I think it's is more usable. Less right. than right. You know, yeah. And the other thing, sort of things you don't think about. Mike Balson talking to him about the trail. He's run into people out there who who are not in the summertime won't walk in the Milford Trail with their dogs because it's so hot. Asphalt is yeah, icy. It's bad for well in well, the in summertime. Summer, yeah, it's hot. hot. It's hot. Yeah. 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 In winter it's icy. Yeah. Yeah. So the stone dust is. is and it a doesn't have surface. the frost he heaves and all this oh, stuff. Oh yeah, and it that doesn't have the repair because of the the right. cracks. Right. Yeah. As an older runner, and for the for younger kids, for the high school kids, where their bones are still sort of forming. Sure. Having a soft surface like that to run on Absolutely. versus right. running on the concrete sidewalks around right. town yeah it makes a lot We're of falling sense. on it if yeah. you yeah. fall on that you're not going to get the same kind of burn that you right. would we've, right we've had a lot of injuries in the the cross country yeah kids it's you know repetitive motion so sure, you sure. would expect it and it's wear and softer tear. surfaces and having that as an option is a good thing so what should the citizens of hopkinton do to, um obviously get more involved but how can we help this trails effort Support, going on yeah. in hopkinton um it sounds like you guys meet every we meet once every Wednesday, every second Wednesday. Wednesday, right? The second Wednesday every month for yeah. the Trails Club. Yeah. Um, and the Trails Club basically works to promote trails, but I think reach out to the selectmen and mm -hmm. and you know any other town officials and just say, hey, I support trails. I'd really like. To. And if you if you know an area you think would be right to have a trail or you think a connection that would be important yeah. and. You know, or, or there's options pointing that out to folks. Um, sure. So you would know. you? So you're suggesting point that out to selectmen, to or selectmen, to or to the trails, or to the trails? town um, town planner. Okay. Another person, yeah. town yeah. manager, because then they mm -hmm. usually will pass it off to somebody who and might. And that's Georgia Wilson now, town planner. Right, but also Elaine Lazarus. Okay. Elaine's been yeah. instrumental in yeah. doing she a lot was of huge trail when stuff I was doing town. my original Absolutely. work too. So yes. Yep. Yeah. So are there? Um, are there any negatives to trails that that um, people could address and say, you know, this isn't such a bad thing, and, and here's the good side of that? Help, Is there anything yeah, that people, people, people could advocate yeah. specifically? Um, well, I, I think some of that will just happen with time. People are worried about safety, mm -hmm. and then they start in terms thinking. Of in, in terms of property, as I said, any or? any change. People don't like change, and they, right. one of the things they worry about. Well, gee, if you open up access, people are going to be walking down my trail. Well, they're not thinking necessarily about well, why would they walk th down your trail? I mean, I run on the trail in the mornings. I've never seen anyone carrying a large screen TV. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, exactly. It would be um, but, pretty... but people, it's sort of this perception of, yeah. of it is, concern. and that's what I found and, when I was working. And on that, it so, as well. what happens is, as like for example with the Hughes Trail, when we put that in, people will see that, oh, you know, bad things didn't happen. Yeah. And then when we and try to sure. add the ends and, and increase the usability, and, sure. and I think people will go, oh, okay, right. you know, it's fine. So, there's some. Getting used to things makes because it's a new thing exactly. and it's different and yeah. yeah and and that happens with many things with pretty much so, everything yeah, yeah. people worry about I mean Change. people worry about um, I mean one of the big concerns on the Hughes Trail when I was looking at Charles View was well we'll have all these people parking in the neighborhoods and using oh. the trail hmm. well a they can park in the neighborhood anyway it really it <laughs> is public road but yeah. that aside it's not going to happen. Right. Because that isn't what we see happening right. on the center you know, trail. The center or, trail. Right. I mean, the center trail is is they we have the there. respite center. Where there's yeah. a, there's parking there for probably you could maybe squeeze eight cars in there. Right. Yeah. But and it's also parking it. that that property is actually owned by the respite center. It is. And, and they so they let us sign, use it, that's which sweet. is so nice. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. And um, it was Tom Neal and I think worked out yeah. nice. that deal. Yeah. Um, but it, it works for everybody, and it's never parking is never an issue. No, because so it's really a benefit to the town. So it won't be an issue in Charlesview, and it won't be an issue in Deer Run, right. which is the latest neighborhood. Oh, okay. Uh, they already have a parking issue with people using Echo Lake. Right. Well, we've put in four spots 
closer to Echo Perfect. Lake. Right. So it's going to remove. If some anything, of it. it may remove some of what was their parking yeah. issue. Right. And if the dog park had gone in there, I think there are ways. You know, we talked to the police. I think there are ways to encourage people to park on 192 Hayden Row, where there will, will be. Again, more parking. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. Put in so. Great. So we have Meg. Meg uh, again says thank you so much, Margie, Lisa, and Peter, um, for talking about the trails. They are such an asset to our town. Mm, thank so we you, do Meg. have yes. Yeah, so <laughs> so those comments. Um, you know, feel free to write an article to the town paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or <hot> news. <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. Um, or because certainly. I agree. I think. I think one of the reasons people move here yeah. is because of the trails. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know, <laughs> and, and I actually, yeah. I lived in Weston for a, a little while um, renting because I, you know, that's a very <laughs> expensive town. But one of the really, one of the things they value is their network of trails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so a network of trails really is part of a value right. to a town. So, and a community. I mean, exactly. and also property values. I mean, there exactly. are um, definite well, right. benefits. Many values, too. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. benefits. So thank yep. you so much for thank you. working on that. And all the work that you're doing. We yeah. really, really appreciate it. Well, time. thank you. Yeah, I know, we have, you, I know you have to get back to your meeting. Yep, yes. I do. So um, we'll be <laughs> back in you. a couple minutes with our next segment. Thank you, Peter. Okay. Thank Thanks. you, Peter. Thank you. <laughs> Still remember all oh, those ads on TV. Without the chemicals, life wouldn't be. I guess that's true, and I guess I can see how we can have fun with technology. No good choices. Uh, yeah. Welcome back. So this segment uh, is not going to be quite as exciting, uh, or maybe it is. Uh, we're <laughs> going to talk about uh, President Trump's selection for the Supreme Court of the United States, or SCOTUS, as the abbreviation is, which uh, cracks me up. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Yep, Brett Kavanaugh. Yeah. So there were four choices um, that came down to four, but he had a huge list yes. in June. So then he came down to Brett Kavanaugh, Amy Cooney Barrett, Raymond Kethledge, and Thomas Hardiman. Yes. All of those people yep. were... Religious, not religious, but yeah. advocates of religious liberty. Right. Conservative. Yep. Um, and possibly would be on the road to overturn Roe v. Wade. Right. And, and women's, I mean, Roe v. Wade is not just about abortion, it's women's rights. Right. I mean, people kind of tie that to abortion, but there's many other things that are tied to Roe v. Wade. Right. I actually listened to an, an um, interview on NPR today with um, a woman who was the person who presented the argument yeah. for Roe v. Wade. She was a 26-year-old um, attorney at that time. Her name, last name is Weddington. And she presented this. Um, her argument is privacy is not meant to be an... Uh, no, that's a different thing. She said, um, the right of privacy that made it possible for women to decide to terminate pregnancy. So her argument was that it, it's a right of privacy right. so that the women should be able to decide this. Right. This was 1973. Yes. So then she went on to say in the interview um, that it's because someone's now they're trying to uh, make it a state by state right. thing. She's saying states, 
it's not meant to be an individual state issue. It's a, it's federal, a right of privacy, right. which can be upheld by the Constitution. Yes. You know, right liberty in the pursuit, you know, yeah. pursuit of happiness. Yep. Um, but liberty is a big piece of that. And um, Kavanaugh, I guess, uh, worry because in terms of environmentalists, Kavanaugh is a skeptic, so he right. doesn't necessarily believe in climate change and all those right. things. Which and he wants no Congress, brainer. not agencies, to make laws like EPA yeah. and wildlife and fisheries. He thinks that the Congress should make all of these laws right. instead of wildlife and fisheries being able to protect you know, a certain dusky frog or right. something. I forget what that was. And it's sad because then yeah. you take away their expertise. I mean, right. Congress is a political yeah. um, area, and I have a hard time with actually our Supreme Court justices being political. I mean, the, when you talk about law, yeah. law is very cut and dry. And I, I did like what he said, that he was going to uphold the law, and right. it's not to, not to, you know, just interpret the law, not make law, you right. know, interpret the way it's written. Right. But there, that doesn't show in his actions, unfortunately. He right. had a lot of controversy when he was on the D.C. Court of Appeals right. yep. um, because some of his mm -hmm. back end stuff. And he he lost the attempt to it's he's it had a kind of checkered past in my eyes you know like he tried to attempt um to keep the six-year-old refugee Elian gonzalez here and not be returned to cuba and he wasn't successful at that he also was on um canvas star's investigation of bill clinton for impeachment yep but then after that he he really wrote or proposed a law exempting the president from criminal criminal prosecution while right. in office right. or to be questioned by right. independent counsel or right. you know so yeah. that so to me can i, I, I think yeah. we agree yeah, on yeah this. jump on this please yeah. feel please call yes, us please. and tell us the other side but for me that's giving a president an immunity to prosecution and that's not Intended by the Constitution, yes. because yeah. he, the, the our president is not king, not dictator, not tyrant. Right, human being. Yes. So, at which well, he's an elected balances. official. Every other, exactly. all the other elected officials. Right. That's we elected them there right. to uphold the law, yes. uphold the Constitution, take care right. of their citizens. If they break the law. They should be accountable, should be like to the you letter are. Of the law. Or, exactly. Yeah. So and I that's mean, why there's a system of checks and balances, and you have the Congress, House of Representatives. You yeah. have these other bodies that are supposed to weigh in. Yes. And you have the cabinet members supposed to advise the president, which yeah. means that the president should be taking their advice and listening to their right. advice, and not just unilaterally, unilaterally, yes, making you know pronouncements and surprising right the people in the media the and that i mean that that's a scary mean, thing yeah and i mean for him to not or any president for that matter i mean bill clinton they impeached oh, bill clinton yeah. over an affair right you know what i mean and things like that right. so Improper he was all and, and that Nixon. shows me where you know kavanaugh was on that very eager to work on that to impeach, yeah, right. Um, exactly. Bill Clinton, uh, a Democrat, and now all of a sudden he's when he worked for Bush, he decided, oh well, presidents should not, they should be exactly. exempt from the law. So that doesn't, law. that's a little flip floppy. Well, right. it's it's very, yeah. it's very bipartisan. I yeah, mean, exactly. and and I don't think right. that's a place for a judge. I agree. He's a politician. He's not. Yep. <laughs> you know? So the other thing that they're talking about um, in terms of this. Uh, the broad interpretation of religious liberty. These four, ju four people that were um, suggested, and it does, it does affect the Roe v. Wade because what it's saying is um, the religious liberty means that the person could prior it would prioritizes the rights of individual believers and religious institutions to act in accordance with their faith. Yes as much as possible, even when the faith comes in conflict with wider policies, such right. as health services, you know, I mean... Well, very basic, church and state are uh, separated. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and I the, mean, that's the way we've operated yep. for many hundreds of exactly. years, and it's absurd to think that we need to right. put that back together. I mean, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't belong together. Right, and he was 
Um, he has been the Court of Appeals, judge in the Court of Appeals for District DC. of Columbia, but he was the former chair of the Federalist Society's Religious Liberty Practice Group. Yes. And wrote a number of briefs pro bono yep. for several religious liberty cases. So he's clearly an advocate of religious liberty. Um, and that some of the recent cases would be uh, the person who didn't want to make a cake for a same-sex right. couple because that went against their religious beliefs. Yep. It's a cake. People. Right, <laughs> and that—it's just my opinion. Um, you just, know, and things and, like that. Well, well, if he's gonna do, if he claims he's gonna, a judge must be independent exactly. and must interpret the law, and not make the law. A right. judge must interpret statutes as written. He, what he has done does not prove that. Right. To Especially be the case. Especially where he flip flopped on saying that the president should be immune after having prosecuted a president and and impeached. Under right, Ken a Starr. Democrat. Yeah, I mean, and and yeah. that's and I'm sorry. I, I was part of politics. Part. Do not belong in in the Supreme Court, and that, and and that's the way it's voted on on both sides. Or Democratic. Or, if there is know. politics in there, there should be a balance of different political views. Right. So they can to come represent, to a consen right yeah. to re represent the country. Right. Come to a consensus. Yeah. I know that um so, something that arrived in my email um said to advocate to Susan Collins who yes, is a I heard her she's interview. a swing vote yes. you know and she's she's conservative but I think of her as a reasonable she is. person she tries to look at the picture and not just gut right. reaction vote. I heard her interview today right. and it was very good yeah so so the the cause is or the the call petition calls on Susan Collins to oppose the, the nomination to stand up for safe and legal access yep. to reproductive rights I mean there are women who there are many reasons why women would want to have an abortion, and and it's not an easy decision. Right. It's a terrible decision. It's right. a it's a heartbreaking decision. Of course, it's not just you know let's get this as inconvenient. Right. No. no. So when a person has to go through that horrible decision making process, a rape. it could be a yeah. all kinds of things, yeah. or it could be a life threatening situation. Right. right. If they were to go through with it. Sure. And I mean, I, this also ties into the morning after pill. It, it ties into birth control. Right. It would tie into funding. I mean, I think, you know, if that was overturned, it would open the door for things to really go back to a different place. Yeah, tyranny. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it, it really is not fair. Personally, mm -hmm. as a woman, I think I really have huge issues with someone deciding how I control my body. Exactly. And then, you know? uh, and this is this is going out on a limb a little bit, but in terms of religious liberty, um, if the person's religious beliefs are that, you know, and this is just way, this is just me going off, but if a woman becomes pregnant and they, they could say, my faith tells me that this is God's will. Yeah. You know. And, and you must have this baby. Right. Yeah. You must have this baby. Or... You know, I can't. I can't do this because the circumstances under which this occurred are so against my faith right. that I cannot. You know, this is an evil thing, a bad thing. So I mean, it's, it's just, it just separation gets into very of gray church and state areas. again. It's exactly. separation of church and state. Right. It's as simple as that, and that's what this country was founded on. And I'm sorry if if people want it I, I don't think it can have it both ways you can't I mean it doesn't work I mean that's why the Constitution was written that's why right. things have worked so well right. but I also have issues with Kavanaugh his ties to the oil industry um, obviously ah. climate denier you know what I mean right. things like that so mm -hmm. you know <laughs> you know when I looked at the litany of things and he's not a great he's not a great he wasn't a great prosecutor he wasn't a great lawyer. I mean, I think, you know, if we have someone in the Supreme Court um, position, they should have a very reputable um, pedigree of, of what course. they can do. I mean, understand the law. I mean, it, it's, it's, I, <laughs> it's not all about winning, but I think it's something to be said about someone that's really just by the letter of the law. I mean, I think that's why people like Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Is oh, absolutely. She, she, People chalk her up as democratic, but she's by the book. She is. By and she's the book. objective. Yeah. So she looks at the facts. Yeah. She looks at the arguments. Right. 
and then she decides and the constitution so she's not there's no other right. agenda or bias that's what a judge is supposed to and do and that's how they should be well and unfortunately i mean where this really feels and has been a political position they're our judge whether i'm democrat i'm unenrolled i'm not a democrat or a republican or a Republican or whatever, they are the people's judges. Exactly. All of the people's judges. Right. So you can't, it's not fair to have them a down one party line and to I be agree. pushing forward that when they're really there just to interpret the law and make judgments on how the law is written at that right. time. And they're the supreme court, yeah. which means that they theoretically are the best of the best right. of the judges of all the circuit courts and right. you know wherever they came from, the court right. of appeals. So, so the choices, the long list of people right. in June had many different right. choices, different options. Right, uh, and then and it the, all came back to this very tight right. group. And the, and the previous, the 2017 pick, when they stonewalled Obama's pick. Yes. And even though Obama was still president and wanted to put the Supreme Court Right. You know, have it have it approved. Yeah, the Republicans stonewalled, stonewalled it, so it. until Trump got into right. office. Right, and then Neil Gorsuch, who is also a religious liberty advocate. Well, and he's he's very pro, pro corporation and right? very anti um, consumer rights. Exactly. You know, that's another issue I have with Neil Gorsuch as well. I mean, not only his religious beliefs, but also right. he does not protect the citizens of the United States. And I'm sorry, they don't work for corporations. They exactly. work for all of us, you right. know, and they're supposed to interpret the law. So it's So the so the question in my mind is who would be the swing vote if if they're going to vote on party lines? Right. I know Susan Collins is one right. of them. Right, it's fifty-one to forty-nine, and fifty-one to forty-nine in the G yeah. So it's political. I mean, Democrat Republican. Yep. So Susan so 50, Collins is one. Yeah. I think I remember a man's name. I can't remember. Well, um, what's the guy? Cory Booker? No, not Cory Booker. He's a Democrat. The, I saw him speaking today. And right. I, so there is another person. Yeah, there's another so there Republican. Two. There's, and he is very anti, yeah. So, I mean, that would push the vote to 51 to 49 on the not side. So mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see what happens with this. Because, and I have another issue with the Supreme Court. Why are they in there for a lifetime? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> you know, I guess I mean, maybe because then there is an upheaval. But, right. but, but the fact that they're in there for a lifetime means that they should ensure that there's a balance. Why aren't there three Democratic seats and right. three Republican right. seats and then the other ones are Or have a retirement age. I mean, or, yeah. I mean, like, I, I'm glad that many justices are in office, but it's kind of sad for these folks. They're almost with shackles, you, you know, because if, they, if they're holding the line, like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, she's yeah. 85, you know what I mean? Like, does this woman work until she dies or i, I mean like know. to she me she could retire couldn't she if she wanted to? yeah oh it's it's she a could. yeah they retire on their own but i think if it's a political right a position or they feel like they need to stay in there to uphold the law well she may feel like she has to do that because she's the balance figure right yeah so there's a question that came on email aren't all judges political you're either appointed or you run for election in my mind a judge should be. Um, they can be elected or appointed. Should be impartial and should be, and the best judge should be able to look at the facts, look at the arguments, and make an impartial decision, right. not influenced by they political bias. They interpret the is law. What we're saying exactly. And make the judgment and the out of the law. I right. mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't go beyond that. Right. I mean, and the Constitution isn't political. They're in lawyers. Terms of <laughs> they're part of one party or the other. Right. It's just how we agree right. to run the country and organize the country. Right. Right. So. So it's 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 a it's a tough tough it subject. Is. So if you guys have an opinion, let us know what you think. Yep. Um, we are we are trying to uh, be impartial, um, and so we would love to hear. You know, if you think <laughs> Kavanaugh is a great choice, we would love to hear that. We are just seeing um, some things that are a little bit concerning, and also knowing that there is an imbalance on the Supreme Court. Yes heavily Republican and seeming to vote right politically yeah as opposed to Ruth Bader Ginsburg who tries to be well, interprets the law and, and judges upon yeah, the law. yeah 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 
I and mean, Kennedy seemed to be also right. someone who would Absolutely. could go either direction because he looked at the law right. and the arguments and voted. He was a true judge. I exactly. Mean, yeah. Right. I mean, that's so. what they're supposed to do. Right. And again, they represent us. Right. They don't represent a party. They're all of us. Yeah. <laughs> all parties. So, <laughs> so. on that note, yes. um, we are going to take a break and we'll be back with our last segment, which is going to talk about the endangered Atlantic right whale what the threats are and what we can do about it or what we should advocate for. Thank See you, you back in a minute. All right, workshop series in July. We should shoot a promo photo. Yeah, but what's the concept? It has to be cool. Is this cool? Is this cool? Is this cool? This is cool. <laughs> Next, wake up and start a poem. Popular poet Polly Brown. So we had, we were able to do a lot of preliminary work in the summers we spent together at her farm in Maine. But in the final stages, she had gone to live in a series of care facilities. So here she is in her not very large room, in the one. Welcome back. So for our third segment of the Margie and Lisa show, we're going to talk about the endangered Atlantic right whales. Yes. Um, I know we, we both did some research, yeah. um, but please feel free to call in and tell please. us what you know or what your opinions are. Well, some real quick facts. Um, so actually what the estimated population is 350 to 400, which in my mind is not a lot. They were, on, they were put on the endangered list, I wanna say in 1970. Mm-hmm. And and they their size their or their range is North America to Newfoundland to Florida, so really the Atlantic seaboard at the U.S. And there is a population that exists off of Iceland who still whales. By the way, I found Iceland still does um, whaling in Northern Europe. Mm -hmm. The 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 one in Northern Europe is extinct now. Their size is quite large. They're 45 to 55 feet. They can weigh up to 70 tons. <laughs> That's pretty big. Yeah, you think of a, like a <laughs> 140, truck. 140,000. Yeah, huh? yeah, so you think of it like a truck may weigh, like a rig, pickup truck may weigh maybe. Two. Four. Two tons, two tons, or if that's a heavier truck, maybe a little bit more. So yeah. that's a lot of trucks put together. So the lifespan is 50 to 70 years. Um, they have, but the whales today have a life expectancy of about 15 years, which is pretty, really sad. Um, you know, mostly from sh ship strikes, ships yeah. hitting them and entanglements in fish right. line. So yeah. that seems to me like with radar, you should be able to see where a whale is when they're 70 tons. Yeah, <laughs> you're you're not gonna hit another ship, so you may not wanna hit a whale. Right. And then also, you know, be responsible with your fishing equipment. Pull it back in, you know, make sure you dispose of it. Don't just cut it off. And I mean, right. that seems like if that's what the, what the there's not a lot of whaling except for in Iceland that that seems to be kind of a simple answer right and it is obviously not the whaling that's damaging not anymore no so yes yeah, so in Iceland reading, is very tiny tiny course, amount of whaling. and like then not not many people there so um what I read from the Cornell lab of ornithology which is actually in birds but I don't know they have they had stuff they, on whales they had stuff on right whales um the human activities are the leading cause yes and um those things, ship strikes, entanglement, they talked about noise pollution as well. Because oh. if you think about it, the whales operate by sonar. Right. Oh, and think of all the noise. And they, they yeah. emit those wonderful right. noises. And if they're hearing something else, they might crash into the ship because they're hearing a noise and right. they think it's 
another will or disorients them. Right. So right. Um, this is Well, saying, I mean, the life expense say, difference is huge. Scary. 50 to 70 down to 50. Right. So this you know? was this one was talking about um, that they received protection from whaling yes. in 1935. Right. So right then, they started to increase until right. 1980s. Right. And at that point, lived 52 years on average, had six chances to bear calves during their lives. Right. But by 95, the lifespans had plummeted. Cow. Right. Yeah. They might, right. So, because they just can't, if they're going to be, you know, all of those, those dangers, then they can't reproduce, they can't increase the, right. the number. Right. So, yeah, 15, and they only had two chances to breed in that 15 year right. period. So, they can't, you know, have more babies if they're going to only live 15 years. Right. Um, so, one of the things they were talking about, um, I guess, supporting people that are advocating for them, like the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. Yep. Um, I know there's Greenpeace used to yep. go out and, and would really go and block find, yeah, yeah, whalers. Yeah. Well, I don't think right. we have the whaling issue so much anymore. Right. But the, no, but big I mean, ships, I mean, cruise ships, whatever, yeah, big ships. Yeah, come on. Like, that's, yep. I mean, So radar, this is talking about sonar. a container ship. Narrowly misses a blue whale. They have a photograph of this. Yeah. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Yep. And the collisions c killed at least 24 of the 67 whales reported dead between one between 1970 and 2007. So that's that's almost 40 years. Right. 67 whales killed. Right. Um. And and we only have and, a few hundred. <laughs> right. And that's about a third of them killed wow. by a vessel colliding with them. Wow. And, wow. And you know, the container ship is 90,000 tons. Right, right. So um, 15 miles an hour, and the collisions, uh, oh gosh, I can't eat. They, they shatter the skulls, break the bones, cause massive bruises. Ooh. Their propeller slices through skin and blubber or severs the tail. I mean, just, yeah, just, just death mutilates immediately. Them, yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, how would the ships prevent that? I mean, I assume sonar, but it's a big ship, so it can't move quickly. Right. Is there like some noise they can make as a whale deterrent? I mean, wouldn't it be best for the ship and yeah, the whales? Yeah, well, this if, is talking about, yeah. um, <laughs> actually, the, so the NOAA, National Marine Fisheries Service, yeah. which is um, offers a multifaceted program aimed at reducing the risk of collisions. Since 97, vehicles have been prohibited from approaching within 500 yards of a right whale. Right, and they can and, see it with a sonar. Right, and they've been re required to report into mandatory ship reporting system areas. So. If they enter specific areas, the vessels call in their location, speed, destination, and they get a return message providing the locations of the right, right whale population. Right. So, so they're they have tagged the whales. So it's and they know where the whales brainer. are. Yeah. So the ships are supposed to call in and say, you know, here we are, and they and they can be told you you need to go. Yeah, two miles left or whatever east. Right. Because you got a whale right there. Is there any prosecution to them if they um, get a whale? I probably I would think or so. Fines yeah, or, I would think I mean, so. Where there's a to system deter and, them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there are fines. Um, this, but this is talking about 2006 recommended routes for vessels yeah. to avoid the Cape Cod Bay feeding grounds and right. and southeastern United States calving grounds. So right. if you know there are going to be whales there and they're they're resting or they're having babies, do not go there. Right. You know, find another way. Right. Um, and they could reduce the whale collisions by 58% because um, there are specific places where they feed, migrate, and calve, have right. their babies. Um, proposal to the International Maritime Organization, areas to be avoided, you know. Um, so there's still, uh, in the la next 14, 5th, okay. So they just keep hitting the whales, even though they're supposed to call in. Right. Um, and it's just... That's kind of simple. I mean, a 70-ton thing can't you avoid it well and the and the fact is there <laughs> is a way of knowing where the whales are right so, so if you you know let's just navigation you just call in okay oh yeah i won't go that direction or you know where they're going to be right and if know. they're putting the and it sounds like the I don't know. the fishing nets are a right. problem so right. Don't cut them off. I mean, recover right. them. Like, yeah, so that's your responsibility. I mean, if I threw my crap in the middle of the road, I get a fine for littering. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? So, well, or if your horses drop anything. Yeah, right. exactly. So, yeah, so the tough lines between lobster or crab pots, they have a submerged gill net mm -hmm. for that. 
um, and they have other fishing gear. So it gets lodged in their mouth, wraps around the flippers or tail, cut into the skin, restrict its movement, mm -hmm. you know, and the deaths are about one and a half whales per year, 1.5. Um, entanglement so common, 75% of living whales bear scars of entanglement. Wow. So they've gotten free, but you know, all that Can't stuff is out Can't you figure out a different, I mean, I, my first boyfriend used to fish for lobsters, so we were trap lobsters, I should say. Yeah. And then you did tie the traps together, sure. but why not have a buoy for each trap or something? Right. You know what I mean? So this is yeah. saying switch to a lighter line. Yes. Which is heavy enough to do the job, but able to break. Right. If a whale comes through it. Right. You know, or something that doesn't float. Right. And can run along the seafloor. Right. So if it's right in the middle of the, you know, they're 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 being clotheslined literally. Right. By right. by this heavy thing that they cannot get out of because we need to eat lobster. Yep. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it says that there's a bunch of pollution, of course, which is not a surprise. You know, it, it you know that's an increasing cause of concern. Right. That their whales significantly exposed to toxic dioxin like yeah. compounds. So yeah. so are we. So we're, yeah. you know what I mean? So there's a lot of things that seem like it would be pretty preventable. I think so. You know, and it, there's some history on the whales. I had no idea that since like the 15th century, they use the whale oils for lamps. And well, for soap. And, and perfume, <laughs> I have to say. Spermaceti yeah. Oh, is, since the 11th century. Spermaceti is an ingredient, or it had been in, in per, some perfumes. Right, right. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it, it's, you know, the whales were overhunted for many, just think about in the 1500s. <laughs> well, and well there, that's And there are, there are some cultures that eat whale meat. Right. You know, right. Um, as a delicacy or whatever. Right, and, and they use their bones for yep. um, construct, you know, ivory. houses and And I, ivory. ivory whale bone. Yeah. Yep. So it's just, it's interesting. I was reading that it was mostly lamplight that it was used for. I mean, mm -hmm. that was the majority of it. it was clean, it was yeah. cool. But it's the source, the... Between 1845 and 1855, it was $1.77 per gallon mm -hmm. in, the 18, in the 1800s. Yeah. So that's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, Expensive. when you think about Expensive it, so that no wonder why people wailed. I mean, that was an incredible amount of money. Yep. Well, we're, so. we're running out of time. Yes. I just wanted to mention, um, the, in terms of the noise pollution, Yes. right whales make the frequent calls over 20 miles lets them stay in touch, but the heavy ship traffic can drown out the, the sounds so they don't know where they're, they're, right. the rest of their and pod is. And that must interrupt is. breeding and you know yep. all kinds of things. Yep. So and they can't, the, the area over which they can hear one another has dropped by 90%, like trying to have a conversation on the median strip of a busy interstate. Right. So even if the conditions are right for breeding and there's no one in their breeding area, they can't find the other whales. Because they can't hear them. So, right. yeah, that, anyway. it seems like some of this might the fishing lines and the yeah. the, the Noise collisions. Pollution or so. Yeah, that should be pretty yeah. fixable. I mean, so if you know, <laughs> if you if you could, I mean, you probably could write to your congressman or inc encourage maybe one of our wonderful um, Carolyn Dykema or, or Karen senators. Spilka yeah. could write a bill. Yeah. You know, introduce a bill regarding right, fishing lines. Right, because our state, particularly Cape Submerge Cod. them, yeah. so they're not floating, or so that they're light enough for the whales to break. It seems easy enough. Yeah. So. That's it for our show. Thank you we for thank joining you for watching. us. Yeah. yeah. And um, we'll see you next week. Feel free to give us a call or email us if you have issues you would like to talk about and you would like to come on the show because we're always looking for things in the town or the world. Thank you. See you next time. <laughs>